Hey everyone, welcome back to another video, Tilly Dakota here. We're diving into the latest release that's got community buzzing, Lautov has just dropped, with some shiny new toys. Brand new starter kits for React, Vue and Livewire, plus a review of Lava Cloud, a deployment platform aiming to make shipping apps a breeze. It's an exciting update, but hold on, not everyone is cheering. In fact, there's been some drama on Reddit with folks asking is Lavo heading in the wrong direction? Stop in for a fun fair and informative look at what's new and what's causing this stir with Lavo 12 and if it is heading in the wrong direction or not. Lavo 12 consolidates the old Breeze and Jetstream starter kits into one streamlined starter kit per stack. We have React View and Livewire. These new kits come loaded with modern tech and UI out of the box so you can hit the ground running. React and View starter kits both use Inertia 2.0 with TypeScript and includes chassis and UI, components for a clean modern interface. It has light and dark mode support, profile settings, page and more are already set up for you. No more building your own UI from scratch, it's all really sleek and modern. LifeWire Starter Kit. This one is a bit different, it's powered by LifeWire 3 and Lava Vault, a new approach to building LifeWire component and it comes with Flux UI components. However, you don't get access to all the Flux UI components. There's a bit of a restriction on it. It's only the basic components you get access to for free. The rest of them is a paid feature, which just stirred some controversy by the Laval community. It also comes with the ability to not use Vault, but it is really up to you. That was a new feature added though later on. I think after some controversy about it. So essentially it wasn't there when it got out on Monday the 24th of February. It came out a bit later in the week. But these new starter keys aim to save you time and decision fatigue. No more choosing between multiple official starters. It's all about convenience and best practices baked in authentication screen, dashboard layout, stack mode, you name it. It also comes with the option to offload your authentication to work OS. WorkOS essentially allows you to use passkey and all sorts of things like that. And it just redirects, just like if you had a Google login screen, it redirects to WorkOS web page. And then on WorkOS, you can then log in with Microsoft, passkey and Google and other things like that. And it will just take care of all the authentication for you. Now, Lava Cloud, this is a huge new addition. Taylor Otwell calls it the future of shipping Lava apps. Imagine deploying your app from your local machine to production in under a minute. That's what Lava Cloud promises. It's hosting platform with zero configuration, no .env wrestling, no server setup, and smooth scaling out of the box. It has zero config and fast deploys, push code, and go live without fiddling with environments set up. Lava Cloud abstracts away the dev of bit so you can focus on code, code deployed done, and potentially all in 60 seconds. It has scalability tools on it as well. So you could easily scale your app, databases, queues with auto scaling options. Plus you get handy tools to run artisan commands, web view, logs, and so on. And the CPU response as well in the dashboard. It has a sandbox tier that's free where you can get domain from Lava Cloud, a subdomain essentially. Or you can pay for the other one for about $20 a month where you get custom domains as well added on and a bit more processing power as well. Lava Cloud is clearly a push to make deploying Lava apps easier and faster for everyone. No more spending days setting up AWS or configuring servers, just git push and let Lava Cloud handle it. This could be a game changer for developer productivity and it shows Lava is growing into a full ecosystem. It's also worth noting that I think both uh, Vapor and Forge are both still going to be there. There's not going to be any changes to them in the system. So that's also a really critical part to add on. So this Reddit post discusses the issue about Laval is heading in the wrong direction. So this post is essentially complaining or mentioning about Jetstream being end of life and the replacement with starter kits and it doesn't come with two-factor authentication and instead Laval is now pushing for a third-party API called WorkOS which is optional you don't have to use it but that will have two-factor authentication if needed and passkey and other safe authentication methods with a bit more complexity to it than the one you get with the starter kits and then 
this bit here where it talks about the life lifestyle kid is now only relying on Vault. Taylor changed this. This is now not only relying on Vault, but also you can do it without it. It's also a bit of complaining about too much magic going on to understand basic things. The static is log in the blade.php, for example. He's talking about this in here, extending the components layouts of off class, and then the validation in here. And then basically just is complaining about the Flux UI, which instead of using plain Tailwind, and you don't like the fact that there's a pro plan on it. This is a heavily liked post on Reddit with 1,300 of votes as of today. Again, I think there's some valid points raised in here. However, Taylor is listening to the community, for example, with implementing um, the opportunity to not use Vault in the starter kit. But enough drama, let's go ahead and take a look at essentially how we can create an application and take a little bit of a look at the new starter kit. So we can go ahead and create a new view starter kit here or React or Livewire. You can see you can use WorkOS. This requires a WorkOS account. It's optional and we will just call this view starter kit test. This will then be stored in here. And we will then go ahead and open up the application in Label Herd. In PHP Storm, sorry. And then here you can then see we have this starter kit. It's still installing. We're using SQLite for this one time here. We can use npm run dev. And then we can just go ahead and copy this. There we go. You can see the look, welcome page looks different for level 12 compared to 11. We go ahead and create an account. It works fine. And you can see we have this dashboard page instead. We have the ability in here to change to password or appearance, to dark light, or system mode. Um, and the documentation in the GitHub repo is a link to as well there. We are, however, able to, if we go into dashboard, the view, which you can find inside JS, able to find dashboard the view. And we're able to change this layout here as well. So you can see, if we go in here into the layouts component, we have app layout, we have off layout, and we have app header layout inside here. So we go inside app, app header layout, and let's take a look at how that would look. And you can see we now have this header layout instead. So we have the ability to basically swap between layouts here. You can use either layout for your advantage. You don't have to stick to the dashboard theme layout. You can also stick to this one. Both of them work by default. I use ChatCN for the view package with TypeScript. The types is placed in here. The lib is placed in here with the utilities. And the components from ChatCN is placed in here along with some other basic components that the Laravel team has created. And then we have composables as well with use appearance and use initials. So outside of that, there's not a lot more to show with these starter kits. The key thing is maybe taking a look in a separate video at how the Flux starter kit works with Livewire, using Vault or not Vault. Again, if we go ahead and take a look, you can see create a new side. If we go into say Livewire, you can see that the moment in here, they haven't actually changed this. But if we go into the Laravel install instead and say just CD back and say Laravel new, say we want to install Livewire. We need to update the install, I think, to be the newer version, so that's why it's not working. But essentially, we can go ahead 
and utilize that as well with or without Vault. But that's actually, I think, everything I've got to share. The VS Code extension has now become stable. And that's all for this video. Please hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Yeah.